So now let's talk about um, the Darlington and this guy's pair. Like I have, I I won't even try to pronounce this. <laughs> um, but it's also known as the complementary feedback pair. Okay, the CFP. Usually, when you when you see this, it's it's usually just going to be uh, described as CFP or complementary feedback or complementary pair stuff like that. So let's take a look at these two. Okay. So first of all, what is the problem that we had in our previous circuit? If we're going to be drawing like, for example, one amp here, let's say, then with, for example, with this transistor it being possible, but let's say if, if it was possible and had a HFE of 100, you would need like one amp flowing through the, the um, base of this transistor no, you need sorry, you need like ten milliamps flowing through the base of this transistor uh, to uh, feed a one amp load here. And the like the biggest problem of that with ten milliamps here, you have to reduce the value of these resistors by quite a lot, making the input impedance of the circuit very low. And then you basically had to uh, wire up another one of this in here just to feed this one. So it's it's kind of futile in that sense. Um, so instead of doing that and just adding another stage, another uh, voltage drop, and reducing the, the effective uh, uh, voltage swing of your amplifier, you can uh, just continue using this stage, just make a couple of changes, and get much more output current with the same topology. So first of all, I think everyone knows like Darlington, uh, it's very useful for switching applications, and you see that a lot when you're using switching. Whenever you're not using MOSFETs, which if you're doing switching, you should be using MOSFETs unless you have some specialty thing. But anyway, let's take a look. So the Darlington pair, it's very simple. Usually you have something like this. You have your typical. NPN transistor like this. Of course, you also have the complementary uh, with the PNP, but again, let's use NPNs here. And this is driven by another NPN in this case, another transistor of the same kind. And this you go, for example, to um, V plus. And here goes to your load, be whatever it is, your load. Okay, so this is the usual topology that you get. What happens here is that you're multiplying the, the current gain. Because usually when you're driving heavier loads, you need a beefier transistor here. And the thing is that is with uh, uh, beefier transistors, usually like high power stuff, is that uh, the more high power you go, the less current gain you usually have. So if we get here, for example, the data sheet for the um, TIP31, you can see, let me check, um, HFE, here we go. With the HFE, it's usually around between like 25 and 50, so it's, let's say it's like 30 or 35. Um, which is a lot less than we had before, like 100 to 200. So this is going to be a lot more current hungry. So because of that, if you just use the, a TIP31 in that configuration before alone, you need a lot more current in the base. But what happens here is you're multiplying that gain because you have a low power device here, like the, for example, a BC847 um, right here. And that transistor, for example, has a, a hundred H of HFE, hundred gain. And if this one has thirty-one, with this feeding into this base, you're just multiplying. So you have a hundred times thirty-one. Okay, so it's like three thousand one hundred HFE in this configuration, which is great. Uh, it's very high impedance here. Of course, it's not anywhere near, like for example, a uh, a MOSFET or something like that. But hey, it's good enough. Again, um, the thing is, the biggest problem with this is that you have two 
VBEs. You have VBE of one transistor, and then you get the VBE of the second transistor. So let's say if the uh, VBE of each one of these, these is, like for example, VBE is 700 millivolts, you get an effective VBE if this was just one transistor of 1.4 volts. And the biggest problem here is that when you're dealing with like single supplies and uh, your supply is quite uh, like a low voltage compared to your output, you want to keep as much uh, uh, room as you can for your signal swing so that it doesn't clip and doesn't cause distortion. And when you use a Darlington pair, you're wasting like 700 millivolts of that swing. And in our case, if we're going to be, um, in the end, having 12 volt supply driving um, with a voltage swing of around like six volts peak to peak, uh, we, are, we only have like six volts to drop across all of our active devices, both on the uh, high side and on the low side. And as much as we can, uh, we, we have to do as much as we can to minimize all those drops so that we can have the, like, the largest amount of volt voltage swing without getting into the distortion. Okay? Another thing that you should keep in mind when using uh, this configuration is that you should also, for audio, mind you, or for switching as well, but you should always add a resistor here, an RE here, uh, just to make sure, because when this device turns off, okay, you, you just go and you turn it off. The problem is the, um, also when it, it, when it has like a, a, a negative swing in the input signal, um, it can't like uh, um, sync current from this base, right? If you, if you understand, you can't, you can't just say, it just, it, it can just, it, the only thing it can do is provide current to, to this point. And this base has like a bit of capacitance, it has a lot of effects. And so that means that at higher frequencies, especially like when we start getting, first of all, getting RF, then this is like a very big problem. But even at audio frequencies at around like 20 kilohertz, this is already a problem and can cause distortion because you can't turn off this transistor, or you can't uh, um, drive it low fast enough and then it just lags and start introducing distortion. That's why you usually add a transistor here, just so that it has a path to ground that's direct. Usually the way that you um, uh, choose this resistor is very simple. You just like um, choose a value that's not uh, going to, to impact a lot on your circuit. Because whenever this turns on, there will be um, two current paths. One's going to go through the base of that transistor and another one's going to be uh, going through here. So for example, if this transistor is taking like 10 milliamps on its base, make this RE at least like the same. So 10 milliamps, that would be a good rule of thumb for this. Just so that it can also sync that 10 milliamps. That would be like a residual here. So that's what you should do. This is very simple, but it's, it's also very effective. You use the same kind of transistor twice but it has that disadvantage of the double uh, VB, so a double voltage drop here. So now let's look at the complementary feedback pair. Let's take a quick tangent and talk a bit about PNP transistors, okay? So a PNP transistor is exactly the same as NPN, but reversed. So let's draw something here. So if we have V plus here, going through a resistor, going through a PNP transistor, okay, let's say then this goes to ground, okay. It works exactly the same way as an NPN, but with the difference. Here, you also get the VB that you got before, 
But the difference is that with the PNP, everything is negative. Whenever the voltage here at the base rises, if this was an, a PNP, an NPN transistor, when the voltage rises, you get current, more current flowing through the transistor. In this case, it's the opposite. When the current rises, when the, the voltage rises, the current starts to decrease. Because the thing is, it, it still needs that uh, higher voltage here at the base, and it's still according to the emitter. So if you make the voltage higher here, you just get closer to the emitter, just like when you make the voltage smaller here in the NPN, and you get less current flowing through the transistor, and you get less voltage here and less current. With a PNP, you have to drive the base lower than your V+, to get more current flowing. And the same thing of with the NPN applies here. For example, if this VB, let's say it's 0.7 volts, okay? If you put one volt here, you will get uh, 0.3 volts here. It's the same thing as you we had before. You can look at, an, at a, a, a PNP circuit like this, and you literally just see your um, NPN version. You can just call this, for example, like ground and this V+, and you literally have the same thing. But when you're dealing with PNPs, you just have to invert the way you're thinking. So if we have, um, for example, like 0.3 volts here, it isn't 0.3, it's actually V plus minus 0.3 here. And so we have a 0.3 volt drop across this resistor, so then we can calculate the current flowing through here. Now with this in mind, let's just design like for example a complementary feedback pair. So first we start with an NPN, okay? But there is one difference. That NPN will be driving the base of a PNP transistor. Okay? And the emitter and the collector will be commoned up. Okay? So same thing here. Should add a resistor here. In this case, it goes to V plus. Same way that you've added it here. Because you need something to pull, like in this case, the gate high. In this case, you need to pull the gate, the, the not the gate. I'm thinking about MOSFET. You ha you need something to pull the base low. Here, you need to pull the base high because when you pull the base high, you turn off this re this transistor. So, how does this work? Whenever the voltage rises here you get current flowing through this transistor, which in turn gets current flowing away from the base of this transistor. And also in case we have a, this, this resistor, it also pulls current from here, which turns on this transistor right here, which is the PNP. The great thing about this circuit is that you get the same um, HFE multiplication that we had here, but this time you also get the benefit of only having one VBE. Okay. So with this circuit, you can drive a load. Let me just draw this here, just for completeness sake, our load. Okay. With just one uh, base emitter volts drop. Okay. Instead of having uh, 1.5, 1.4, you only get a VBE, effectively, effectively VBE of 600 millivolts, which is great because you get a little bit more voltage swing on your output with the only disadvantage that you have to use a PNP, which is sometimes a little bit more expensive than its NPN counterpart. But it's a trade-off that you have to decide on. If you if you if it costs us like uh, uh, a big part of a project, then you should consider this. Otherwise, it's a no-brainer. Just go with the complementary feedback, and you get more voltage swing, less distortion because of that, 
and uh, basically for the same for the same circuit. Also for this resistor here, the same applies. It's here. You need this this uh, resistor to provide enough sinking current for this uh, transistor to to turn off, and it should also not be high enough because when this basically just diverts the current to the load uh, this load is not uh, excessive and just causes this to heat up or just to, have it to be more inefficient so basically this is the uh, complementary feedback pair and the Darlington with this you can build the same circuit that we've talked about in here but you just substitute this transistor by one of these two. If you substitute it by the Darlington pair, then you have to make sure that you rebias this so that you take into account the different VBE. So in this case, we had, for example, we had a um, 1.8 volts here. Uh, in this case, we'll have to have, a, for example, 1.2.5 volts here in order to maintain the same ratios that we had before, so that we only uh, change these resistors and not have to change anything else. But if we went with the complementary feedback pair, it was literally just drop in. You can just substitute it, put this circuit right here, and you don't have to change anything. So, yeah, um, that's basically it. So, if you need to drive higher loads with your emitter follower, just use one of these in conjunction with the theory that we've discussed here. And you have a pretty good uh, emitter follower.